Okay, so our tracking is now done. And if we have a little look there, things are looking pretty good so far. So this isn't actually the uh, the final stage, of course. You know, we uh, need to come in and refine these here as well. Um, but I'm just going to um, hop over that just for one moment and I'm going to be taking us to a, another stage just so we can check how accurate the camera is at the moment. So I'm going to move past this, uh, this part of the workflow and go straight into solving for camera motion. So what this is doing is it's going to come in and calculate our camera move from our tracking markers here. And it's going to create this little point cloud. And this point cloud here is going to be describing the 3D motion. So just with one 3D track, we can do a whole host of things and it's gonna be the basis for the rest of the project. So we're gonna be doing the uh, screen replacing, adding a logo up in the wall here, even cleaning up some of the desk. Um, and we can do all of that once we get just a single solid 3D track. Now at the moment, all of the points in the point cloud seem to be matching pretty nicely, but let's see how accurate that really is. So I'm gonna move us from our 2D view into our 3D view. And this shows us a 3D representation of the uh, of those same points. So we can actually start to see these in space. Now if I hold down the command key or the control key on Windows, then I can start to pan around this and we get these sort of little clusters of stars almost. And I hold down the alt key and we can zoom out there. And these are our point clouds, sorry, these are the same points that we were looking at just a moment ago in proper 3D space. Now all of this is going to look a little bit confusing just for the moment, but we're going to come in and we're going to uh, look at those and figure out how to read those a bit better later. Um, what I'm going to do now is actually just look at this white line here, because this white line describes our camera movement. And um, this is the thing that we're going to look at for uh, accuracy and just to see how accurate our camera movement actually is. So you can see here, as we move through the timeline, the camera is moving in a way that's consistent with the shot, but it is slightly bumpy still. Uh, and those bumps are probably due to a few kind of weird uh, tracking markers that we already have. Uh, it could also be down to where we start to, uh, to do the camera solve. But let's take a look at the, um, the first case scenario there. So if I hold down the space bar, we open up our little um, wheel here with all the different things that we can do. I'm just gonna clear that solution there and it will snap us back to our 2D view and our trackers. So what this stage is actually going to be uh, consisting of is it's gonna be looking at um, getting the best tracking points that we can here. So I'm gonna uh, again use the Alt key just to zoom in just a little bit. And if you have a look and go over any of these tracking points, we get a sort of little traffic light system. So any green line here is where uh, PFHO is very confident that the track it's got is accurate. Where it starts going yellow, it's less confident. And where it turns red, it's not very confident in what's happening at all. So let's take a look at this one over here, for example, and just see if that really is matching up with the movement there. Actually, it's probably not. So what I'm gonna do is just select it, hit backspace and delete it. Uh, so if we cull all of the dodgy frames, so this one over here, for example, where you can see it's drifting, this one here. So check it out. You see it's looking pretty good until it starts to intersect with the screen there and it starts to drift off over time. So we're gonna start just to cull a few of these here. Uh, and we can select multiple, uh, multiple uh, tracking points at any point just by clicking and dragging and we get a little lasso tool going around there. And let's just get rid of that. Cool, and all of these things is just gonna help uh, with the eventual accuracy of the camera move. Cool, so now I've culled a few of those, hopefully the worst offenders. What we can do is we can come to our next part here, which is all about estimating the focal length uh, and the scene orientation. And this is gonna be absolutely crucial when we take our data over into the compositing app.